So in this video, I want to talk about the Phillips curve. Uh, first, uh, the Phillips curve is based on our AS relationship. Just going to write it down here. P is equal to PE 1 plus mu and then the function f u z where the function f u z comes from the labor market uh, mu is the markup one plus mu the markup factor and p e the expected price level so we have seen these relationships uh, first in the labor market diagram uh, we have the real wage on this axis and uh, the rate of unemployment on this axis and we get a function uh, f u z that determines the equilibrium real wage and the equilibrium unemployment rate by eliminating the normal wage then we get to this expression, which in turn we have as well seen in the ASAD uh, diagram as a relationship between the price and output, where there's one point on this AS fun uh, curve that uh, has a price level equal to the expected price level and an output level equal to the natural level of output. And uh, as we've discussed at length, causality moves in this direction through the labor market diagram, the labor labor market mechanism. So let's just uh, have this here as the background upon which we'll develop the concept of the Phillips curve, and uh, we'll do that based on this relationship. So let me go to a new page and write this out here once more. F U Z. So then, uh, f then the, the first step is that we are going to assume a particular uh, relationship for F U Z, namely one minus alpha U plus mu. Uh, so let me correct that. 1 minus alpha u plus z. So z is that shift factor. So we have this uh, particular relationship and we substitute that for f of uz in the ASAD in the AS curve and we get uh, p equal to pe 1 plus mu 1 minus alpha u plus z. And this, in turn, we can rewrite uh, in terms of growth rates, meaning in terms of rates of inflation. And I will not derive that here, but refer you to the appendix of the textbook and uh, just state the conclusion. Now, let me write it down. Pi equal to pi e plus mu plus z minus alpha u. And this is what we're going to work with. This is the Phillips curve. Let me explain it piece by piece. On the left hand side here we have the the rate of inflation. So pi is equal to pt plus 1 minus pt divided by pt. That is the growth rate of the price level. That is the definition of the rate of inflation. Pi E then is the expected inflation rate that is uh, P T plus 1 E, so the expected price level minus P T over P T. That is the expected price, the expected rate of inflation. Mu and Z in turn here are the shift factors, namely the markup rate and the shift factor Z in the labor market relationship. And these are assumed to be 
unchanging over time, the same as this coefficient alpha, which relates the unemployment rate, unemployment rate u, to the inflation, uh, to the rate of inflation. So, uh, I want to further uh, clarify this by adding this relationship by adding time indices. So we have pi t equal to pi t e plus mu plus c minus alpha u t. That means that the endogenous variables here are the rate of unemployment in the year t, the expected rate of inflation in the year t, and the actual rate of inflation in the year t. So the shift factors and the coefficient alpha are assumed to not change over time. Ut affects the rate of inflation today, and the expected rate of inflation today affects the rate of inflation. In what ways? Well, uh, if the unemployment rate increases, we have here this negative sign. If the unemployment rate increases, the inflation rate falls. And that is exactly the mechanism that we know from the labor market diagram and the AS relationship in the ASAD model. That is, a higher unemployment rate leads to lower nominal wages, which translates into the price level, and so a hi higher unemployment slows the rate of inflation. But uh, higher expected inflation directly translates to higher inflation. Uh, today. Similarly, increases in the markup rate and the shift factor Z uh, positively affect the rate of inflation today. Okay, so uh, let me go to a new page and we develop a couple of perspectives on the Phillips curve. The first is uh, the old Phillips curves. Let me put that in quotes, old PC the old Phillips curve. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, 1948 to 1969 is often mentioned as the period uh, to which this old Phillips curve applied. Uh, we can draw a diagram to illustrate that. As on the vertical axis, we have the rate of inflation, rate of inflation. And on the horizontal axis we have the unemployment rate. And we have a negative inverse relationship of this kind here, a negative relationship between the rate of inflation and, and unemployment. Specifically, uh, lower unemployment implies a higher uh, rate of inflation through the bargaining mechanism. Mm. And we can specify that in the equation as pi t equal to mu plus c minus alpha u. Notice here that the term pi e has disappeared. We assume that pi e is equal to zero over this time period. So the expected rate of inflation does not play a role or Put differently, on average, the participants in the labor market, employers and employees, uh, do not pay attention to uh, inflation as it is on average zero. That means that this old Phillips curve provides a stable trade-off between inflation and unemployment, and policymakers as it is often put, uh, can choose points along this curve to uh, target the desired rates of unemployment and inflation. And so, presumably, one could accept a higher rate of inflation for a lower rate of unemployment, to achieve a lower rate of unemployment. Now, the new Phillips curve differs uh, right here the new PC from 1970 onwards uh, the new PC relates in contrast the 
change in the rate of inflation so delta pi the change in rate of inflation to unemployment and that leads to uh, a trade-off of this kind where there is one point which as we'll see is the natural rate of unemployment where inflation is constant that is here delta pi is equal to zero and the rate of inflation is positive but constant at any other point along this curve inflation is increasing or decreasing so uh, how can we make sense of that first uh, we're going back to pi the original relationship pi t pi e t plus mu plus z minus alpha u t and we specify an expectational process so pi t e in fact depends on last period's inflation with this coefficient theta so expected inflation today is a function is proportional to uh, inflation yesterday this year's inflation uh, is related to last year's inflation and specifically we'll make the assumption that theta is equal to 1 we can then plug that in uh, the Phillips curve up here and we get pi t minus theta pi t minus 1 or let me make this as clear as possible pi t pi t minus pi t e is equal to pi t minus theta pi t minus 1 which with theta equal to 1 is pi t minus pi t minus 1 which in turn is equal to delta pi t namely the change in the rate of inflation so with adaptive expectations and specifically a coefficient of theta equal to 1 we get uh, the change in the rate of inflation on the left hand side of the equation so we have d pi t equal to mu plus z minus alpha u t and that becomes the new Phillips curve namely that unemployment has an effect on the change in the rate of inflation but not the level of the rate of inflation